Hello, my gorgeous ones. Welcome to Alicia Budget Beauty. My name is Alicia. Here on my channel, I love affordable fashion, beauty. I do hauls, tutorials, reviews, countdown of palettes, all sorts of fun stuff. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe, stick around, be a friend. All right, you guys, I have 16 palettes that I used in the month of October. I don't know what it is about the number 16, 16 and 17, but I seem to always use 16 or 17 palettes throughout the month. So there's sometimes a day I may skip and not wear eyeshadow. And then sometimes I use it multiple times, especially if it's a PR palette that I'm really trying to extensively review. I use it over a couple of days. So I do have 16 here and I am going to rank them, which is always so difficult for me to do. So if you want to see my least favorite of these, to the top number one spot, keep on watching. All right, you guys, so the bottom spot is the only one that I think I have decided I am going to declutter this palette. And we actually saw this palette in another video that were palettes that did not meet my expectations. That palette is the Sigma Beauty Cinderella palette. Now, I said in that video about the ones that didn't meet my expectations. I would try this again. Now that I'm a little bit better, I'm not like the most skilled in the world at my eyeshadow, but I'm much more skilled than I was back whenever I first got this palette. So I thought maybe it was just me back then. So I did try it out this month. And for me, it still just isn't very good and it's so sad because just looking at this this may be the prettiest color story out of all 16 of these it is such a beautiful color story but the mattes in here are kind of patchy they they take a lot of work i i did i will say i had less trouble than I did the other times I used this back when I first got it, but that's because I am better at doing my makeup, but it still gave me a lot of, I, I shouldn't have to work that hard. And the shimmers in the pan look like they'd be really pretty, but they just don't sparkle that much. So for that reason, I just decided, you know what, don't keep a palette just because the color story is beautiful and the packaging is beautiful and you wanted it to be amazing, there's no reason. I, I will never reach for this when I know I have other shadows that perform so much better. So I will be decluttering that one and it is at the bottom at 16. Now, another palette that is on the chopping block is the Little Mini from Natasha Denona, the Mini Trio, I always wanna say Trio, Trio Chrome Palette. I have a video on this where I did create a look. And while I did think that the look was really pretty, I just, I will never probably reach for this. Um, I should probably just declutter it. I'll probably never reach for this because I do have these shades and other palettes that I think perform better. And one of my, like the biggest selling points to get this palette for me was supposed to be this beautiful looking duo chrome in here that is not impactful at all. Now the mattes perform okay. Like I probably like this shade the best. I tend to really love these like powdery cool tone blues like this here in all my palettes that I have like it, but it just missed the mark for me. And now I'm talking to myself. I think I probably will put this in the declutter. So maybe I am decluttering too. So this is number 15. All right. At number 14 is one that's also in the chopping block. I haven't decided to declutter this one yet. I don't think I will change my mind like I just did with the Natasha Denona. I'm still going to play with this a little bit more. This is the BFF palette from BH Cosmetics. This was a collab with Alondra and Elsie. Now, when I first got this, I thought it was so good. And I don't know if now, I've had this for a couple of years, I think now, two years maybe. I don't know if now I've tried so many formulas and nothing's changed about this palette. It's just that I've tried ones that are better or if it never really was that good to begin with and I just thought it was, I can't decide. But 
I used it this week, I actually used it twice. The look I liked the best was whenever I used just a blue in here, a blue matte, and then I used Silk Naturals Loose Pigments to make my look. I liked that look a little bit better. But it just, I don't know, like the mattes took a little bit more building. They weren't as pigmented as I thought that they were way back. And then the shimmers aren't as impactful either. Now, probably my favorite shade in here is this one, just like the Natasha Denona. I'm a sucker for those type of blues, but I know that I have blues like this in other palettes that perform better once again. So I'm gonna try this one more time. I do like this color story a lot though. I like that you have warm tones, cool tones in here. I like, in theory, I like that you have this like mustard tones in here because I normally love those, but this one just doesn't perform. And I know I've got mustard in other palettes. So I'm gonna try this one one more time and it might also end up in a declutter video, but for now, it's not. Okay, at number 13, now we're getting into palettes that are good, like that are that are really good. They're not like the best, but they're good and they're not on the chopping block. So we have this Lash Step. This is an all matte, oh, Lash Step is the brand. The palette is called Matte About You. So it is an all matte palette. Now I already knew about this brand because I found their lashes at Walmart on clearance a while back and really, really loved them. I looked them up because I'd never heard of them before and I don't really understand, like they're not active on Instagram, um, like haven't been in quite a while, but yet this shows up in Ipsy. So I don't really know what that's all about. I don't know what's happening with the brand, but I will say these mattes performed really, really well. Now I did bring in actually a single from Davina Cosmetics to make the look more special since it was, was all matte. But if I need mattes and I need tones like this, I would reach for this. It performed really well. It's very pigmented, blended beautifully, very easy to use. It's just not very exciting. So that is why it is not number 13, right? I think so. Okay, at number 12, we actually have the Nomad Air, uh, the travel palette. So I did oh, a video on this. This was part of the whole collection that had the face cream, the uh, lip sal save, however you wanna say it, um, the bag and the spray. And then here is the palette. Now this actually performs really, really well. There's nothing wrong with this palette. It's just, is it going to rank high out of all these? No, because it's a six pan, it's neutrals. Like, I mean, these are their good formula of the shimmers and Nomad has kind of tinkered and toyed around with their shimmer formulas in this year. These are the better ones. The mattes perform nicely. It's just not that exciting. I mean, it's a great thing to throw in your bag to travel with for sure, but that's why it's ranking so low. Not that it's bad. It's just not an exciting palette. Okay, at number 11, we have the Tinkerbell palette from ColourPop. Now, this is a really, really good palette. I mean, had I maybe used a different variation of palettes, this could have ranked higher because the quality is really great. I do really like this color story a lot, but for me, it's just not incredibly versatile. I do love this like mauve shade right here. I love the greens in here. I love the shimmers, but because I would really only reach for this if I know I'm gonna do green, obviously, and like these tones of green, and maybe throw in a mauve. There's not like a ton I can do with it, but it is a really pr pretty palette, performs really good. It's actually one of my favorite ColourPop palettes. I don't have that much anymore. Um, ColourPop has kind of just lost its luster for me, but I do think it's a good palette, but it is number 11. Okay, coming in at number 10 is one that I've kind of changed my mind about after I did a look and I had it in my palettes that didn't meet my expectations, but I did say that this was one that was, it was kind of like a weird one for me to put in that category because this is from ZC, by the way, this is the Fireworks 16 um, Crystal Skull Palette. So the reason why I did have this at the beginning of that didn't meet my expectations video wasn't because this was bad. I just so badly wanted it to be amazing because the color story I think is just bomb. I just think it's so 
beautiful and I love, adore this packaging so much. So I was hoping it would just be like one of those that I wanted to scream to everyone, you have to go get this. But what happened was, is it was a gorgeous look, but I couldn't, I can't really say that it's like the most amazing formula ever. The mats in here are really, really pretty. I do think the mats are kind of the star of the show. You have some different textures in here. You have some kind of dry shimmers, like a topper that's real sparkly and kind of chunky and flaky, but it's really, really pretty on. But these mats in here, I really, really, really like. So it is number 10. And I am really glad that I ended up, like, I still like this. I'm going to keep it in my collection. It just could have been amazing. But instead, it's just, it's good. And it's pretty. Coming in at number nine is the Casper the Friendly Ghost Palette. I did three looks with this palette recently on my channel, along with all the other products that came in that collection. It was such a cute, cute collection. The attention to detail was adorable. I mean, these like crystals that move around in here and there's like little bats, really, really cute. For drugstore to be this detailed is so impressive to me. So here is the color story. And I really, really enjoyed this palette. I had fun with it. I really love the mattes in here, except I did have a little bit of trouble with only this one. Now in that video, I actually tried out every single shade in here and there's 24. So I used basically eight on each eye in some way. And the only one that gave me trouble is this bottom purple down here. It still worked. I just had to really work at it to not be a little bit patchy, but hey, we've got the blue in here that I love. So I'm gonna keep this palette and I'll have that pretty blue like I like. The mid-tones to the pastels in here blew me away, mattes wise. Like they are so, so good. They're bright, punchy. They're not like these pastels that you don't really see. You have to keep building to get any pigment, no, like, it's very, very pigmented. There's different textures in here, shimmers wise. We do have like a cream to powder formula, which is really cool for drugstore. You're about to see another one of those in this ranking, but I really, I really enjoyed this. I mean, it's a really good solid drugstore palette or better than most drugstore palettes, I will say. At number eight now, we have another drugstore palette and that is the Scooby-Doo uh, Wet n Wild palette. I also got their entire collection and I went over all of those products. And the star of the show for me really out of all of those was this palette here. Now, I mean, it is number eight, you know, kind of in the middle of this ranking, but I mean, if I say this was a ranking of 16 drugstore palettes from all different types of brands, this might be in the tops because this is a very, very good palette. This is definitely the best Wet n Wild palette I've ever used. The mattes in here, pigmented, blend really well, had no issues. I used every shade in this palette as well in that video. And then you have this amazing cream to powder formula here that is so cool. The shimmers in here are more like impactful metallics. You do have an attempt at a duochrome in here. So I think the color story also is beautiful for October, November. You have, you know, your oranges and your fall tones, but then you also kind of have like your spooky colors here too. Really, really impressed what they did with this palette. And yeah, I just think it's adorable. Really, really good. Okay, at number seven now, we have this iconic London Booming and Gleaming Eyeshadow Palette. This is a palette that really took me by surprise. Got this one in Ipsy and I was like, oh great, here we go, another neutral palette. And Iconic London is a little bit hit or miss for me. They do have a palette called like their Beach Babe Palette. That one really surprised me too. That one is a really good palette, but I've also tried other things from them that just are okay. So I thought I'll try this out, but I'll probably end up decluttering it. Not going to do that. Now I do have a lot of palettes starting to acquire a lot of palettes now that are these neutrals. Like we saw that one from Lash Step. We see this one. You're going to see another one here in a minute with a similar color story. So eventually I'm going to be tapped out on neutrals like this, but this is a very good palette. The mattes in here are excellent. The shimmers are okay, but the mattes 
are definitely the winner. Really, really nice palette. I think this would be a great gift idea for someone who maybe doesn't have all the different formulas in the world and they just need like a big neutral palette. Maybe they don't want super impactful shimmers. This would be a perfect gift. Coming in at number six is the Heather Austin palette from Adette. Now, this was also one that was in my video about palettes that didn't meet my expectations. And I don't want anyone to get me wrong. I kept saying it in that video, but let me just reiterate that most of those palettes in that video were still really good palettes. They just didn't quite live up to the hype for me. That is what this one was. And so I decided to give it another shot after I did that video and it still is just, I don't know, like I, it's a pretty palette and you do have these special shades in here, but there's something about, like I should love this shade. I love a pukey green, a mustard, like a, you know, like a swampy green, but it just, this one I have to like really, really build. And then I just, it's just not seamless when it's blending into the other mattes in here for me. And then the special shades in here, I don't think are as good as say the Aero inspired palette or um, some uh, Sumerian Sunset. So I know this is in the top of some people's Adept palettes. That's why I thought, oh, it better be better than my favorite Adepts and it's not. So I still really like it. It's still a beautiful palette. I'm gonna keep it, but it's still just not my favorite, but it did land at number six. Okay, coming in at number five, we have the Simply Posh palette from uh, no, we have the Cozy Cabin palette from Simply Posh Cosmetics. Now, if you guys follow this brand, you know that there is going to be a holiday edition of this coming. It is already on its way to me. I'm really, really excited. So I will have tutorials up for that. They also have a face palette. So I assume that I'm getting them both. I won't know until it arrives, but I'm super excited. It looks really pretty. And this is the original Cozy Cabin and I just think that this is so smart. Simply Posh is the best at picking their color stories, in my opinion. Um, I mean, this half is definitely fall vibes, you know, crackling fire woods. And then you get over here and you have like your cool tones, these purples, these like icy chili blue. This one's called Snowfall and is so pretty. It shifts like a purple to the icy blue these are so shifty in here i love the crackling fire it is such a pretty shade it's orange and gold and just beautiful mattes do really well in here i mean i've got my pukey green like i like it's a really good palette i i do think that they're improving the formula in this next palette for these shades here they're already really good, but I do think they can be a little bit better and I'm so excited to test out the new palette. All right, at number four, we have the Huda Beauty uh, Rose Quartz palette. Definitely my favorite Huda Beauty palette. It's it's just so pretty. Anytime I wear it, I, it's, just, it's just beautiful. I think this is my favorite shade in here. It is Cosmic Love. It's so pretty on like the inner corner or just like the inner portion of the lid. I love the mauves in here, these pinky tones. I mean, if I want something just soft, romantic, and I think I would definitely go for this. I had it in my date night category, I believe, in a different video. It's a great date night palette. I also think this is pretty much, pretty much a year round palette. Maybe not fall, but I think you can get away with like everything else. It may not scream summer, but I think like if you want something light on your eyes, you could wear this in the summertime, but I really see winter the most with this palette. So I'll probably pull it back out sometime during the winter, but it's just, man, this is, are really solid, good palette. Okay, coming in at number three is the Wicked Widow Graveyard Smash Palette. This is such a cute palette and I really love this color story. Wicked Widow Beauty has become one of my top favorite formulas for eyeshadows. I mean, we if you want pigment, the mattes are so pigmented, but they're not that pigment that once you get it on, it won't blend out. It's not one of those, it doesn't play well with others. It 
They blend together beautifully. They are easy to work with, but so pigmented. The special shades are always really impactful. And I think she does such a good job with her color stories as well. She really tries to, I kind of know this personally about her, she tries to do something different. Like she doesn't just want to have the same old color story that everyone else is doing. And I really appreciate that about her. Had a blast with this one. All right, you guys, oh, this is so hard. I'm even like debating as I'm picking them up right now. We have our number one and number two spot. Could not be any different from each other. We have the Blend Bunny Sickly Sweet Palette, which is a pastel and random dark shades palette. And then we have the Mirage Palette from Alter Ego, which is a deep neutral color story with warm, fiery tones. <sighs> you guys, this is so hard because, okay, here's what these two have in common and I may just cheat and not choose the top. What they have in common is both of these took me absolutely by surprise. I would have had this in my palettes that exceeded my expectations video had I tried it at that point. This is the palette that inspired that video because I was not expecting to fall in love with it as much as I did. So this would have been in there too. They have that in common that I didn't expect the um, greatness that they are. These also both really inspired me and I'll tell you why this one inspired me first. It is because you have these dark tones in here with your pastels. I don't know why I never thought to do that before. I've probably done, you know, a pastel, mostly pastel with like maybe like a smoky wing before, but I had never played with like deep tones of green and purple with pastels. And it just, it was so cool. Really, really inspired me. I've only actually just put my toe in the water with this one. I've only done three or four looks three or four with this one. And so there's definitely more that I could do. So it's just a very inspiring palette. And then this one, because it has these cream based shades in here, these two, man, they are the best cream based shadows that I've ever used. They are so good and you can do wings with them. You can do it as a base and really make the shimmers pop on here. The gold shimmers in here are beautiful. I just, it inspires me to mix cool tones and warm tones together. I just was not expecting how good this palette is. And I've had people get it since I did my video on it that are like, you weren't kidding. Like this palette's amazing. So. It's really, really hard to choose. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't. Like flip a coin, one or two, it could go either way. All right, you guys, that is the end of my palette ranking for October. Let me know what your favorites in October were and maybe some that disappointed you. And as always, have fun shopping, budget shopping. Bye.